Let's take a look at this graph. Notice on the right that we have a table with position points and time points. Now this table was used to create this graph. What we're going to do is take the plots we've pointed or the data from the table on the right and convert it into a velocity versus time graph. So let's change up this table a little bit. Now the first thing we need to remember is the formula for velocity is change in position over change in time. Well take a look at the labels on our graph. We have position and time. So what we need to do on a position time graph is to simply solve for the slope. That'll give us the velocity we're looking for. All right, so let's pick a first point. Let's choose the very first point on our table. So that gives us a rise of two meters and a run of one second. Now, rise over run gives us two meters per second, which is our velocity. Now, an interesting thing with a graph like this, notice that it's as straight as a ruler. Anytime you have a position time graph or a portion of that graph that's completely straight, it means that the velocity is going to be constant throughout that entire period. So every one of these points is going to have a velocity of two meters per second. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take the last point. So the last point has a rise of 12 and a run of six. So rise over run, 12 divided by six gives us two as well, or two meters per second. Now, all we need to do at that point is, um, because it's a constant velocity, the line straight, every one of our points is going to be two meters per second. That was pretty easy. Now we just need to plot this. So let's move this graph out of the way and put in our velocity time graph. This graph, we just simply took the points, our time and our velocity, and replotted it. That's all there is to it. In another video, I'll show you how to find the position from this graph, the velocity versus time graph. Until next time.